Russell Benson. Challenge that raised nearly seven million pounds for the most of your own disease in three days, 
and the eight million pounds that was raised for cancer research UK for no, no, no makeup self in six days. But vitally, these campaigns were not driven by the charities. They just took advantage of the stories they saw and allowed people to take action on these stories. And we even have our personal stories. Why do we work for the charities that we do? Why do we even work for charities at all? And I talk about beneficiaries and staff and volunteers and fundraisers as different groups of different categories, but they're not. There are many overlaps amongst them, and we, it's important to recognise this and take advantage where we can. At the homeless charity, about 10% of frontline staff um, are ex-homeless themselves, and their stories become an even more powerful way to tell the story about the successes of the charity. So we've chosen our stories and how are we going to communicate them? Well, public talks in schools and direct communication is preferable for best impact, but of course it's not always possible for us to do that. Social media and other digital channels is an obvious option. And why not? It's easy, it's cheap, it can be interactive, shareable, and give the largest possible exposure. And options there include Q&As and webcasts, blog posts and other case studies, but please write written in the first person. And as much as possible, let's use video and picture content. If pictures say a thousand words, videos miss 10 million. And let's do it in as much our stewardship journeys as we can. Do we ever have beneficiaries that say thank you to our fundraisers? Of course, if you're from a charity that has a model of sponsor a child or an animal, you've been doing this for years. But we now have the technology to do it better, more cost effectively, and with a bigger reach. So once we have the story and we have the channels, what do we want the message to be? This is where it can get a bit tricky, because we're balancing the authenticity of the voice against controlling the message or making sure it's a charity tone of voice. Of course we have to control it sometimes for our big campaigns and big adverts, but where we can, let the authentic voice shine. Remember, people give to people, or to the cause, not always to the charity. We should stop thinking about donors as giving money to the charity that we can then spend to make the world better. Donors give money or raise money to make the world better. We just enable that to happen, connecting those who want to change the world to those who can. And just this simple language change can connect the donor more to our cause. If we can get this done through our beneficiaries, talking directly to our donors, it's an even better connection. And language is important. Once, when I spoke alongside a homeless client, I asked afterwards for feedback about what I said. He told me everything was fine, but he asked me to change one thing. He said, could I stop saying homeless people and instead say people who are homeless? Because he quite rightly wants to be seen primarily as a person and someone who's homeless as second. And it's important. Our beneficiaries, most of us, are often faced by prejudices, stigma and stereotypes in society. By giving them a voice, they can break down these barriers. Just last week, Julia Unwin, the CEO of the Joseph Roundtree Foundation, said, we must enable the voice on those who live in poverty to ensure that those voices are heard and listened to, not met with the oscillating insults of pity and scorn. And we need to do this now. We do live in a new world in many ways, and we know our trust has been dented in the past 18 months. And we also now know that many people just don't trust experts. But our beneficiaries are the authentic experts that people will listen to, so let's get them heard. We have the most incredible stories in our organisations that we can sell our cause from. They just don't exist in other organisations. Um, and if we can give our beneficiaries a true voice, we can not only help ourselves to raise more income, we can help our beneficiaries feel valued, and we can play our part in helping the wider public understand that these issues that we care so passionately about. So it's our job to go out there and each find our own Esther and give them a platform to be heard. Thank you very much.